Welcome back. Ron and and the Car Doctor. You know what? It's that time. Yes, sir. We are giving away a Car Doctor t-shirt. This one comes to us. This question comes to us courtesy of Jessica from Facebook. As we asked, if you're new to the show and you're just tuning in, what we're trying to do is uh, get more information from you, see what it is you're thinking about, what problems you're having. And we're also trying to give you the opportunity. We're a little Car Doctor bling, if you will and uh, get some T-shirts out into your hands because, you know, we know you're all looking for them. So for Jessica Walters out on Facebook, uh, California, uh, we tried getting a hold of you. But here you go. Let's answer your question. And uh, what we're going to do is post this question up on Facebook. We'll convert it and put it up there on Facebook after the show today. And uh, the answer will be there for her and everyone else. And uh, when Jessica contacts us, we'll be glad to send her out a Car Doctor T-shirt. She says, my question to qualify for the shirt. And I hope this is more than just for the shirt, but I get it. Concerns my 1996 Jeep Cherokee, 4 liter, popping a 420 trouble coat. I could swap out the cat and probably be done, but I spent 11 years as an avionics tech in the Navy, which taught me thorough troubleshooting and diagnosing a problem is the proper way to do things. Hey, no kidding. I don't have access to an oscilloscope or a fancy scan tool, only a basic code scanner. In my attempt to see what I could figure out, I tapped into the signal wire from the upstream and downstream O2s with separate multimeters, one on each sensor. I then ran the engine until it was nice and warm. My problem is that the two rings were not the same which I figured would mean a dead cat, but every now and then the downstream would be nearly the same voltage as the upstream. Does this mean that the cat is on its way out but not totally shot or the O2 suspect? What else can I try to do and figure this out besides going out and spending big bucks on a scan tool or shotgunning the problem with parts? Thanks for any help you can give. This comes to us from Jessica off the Facebook page. Jessica, the problem with trying to troubleshoot a catalytic converter without a scan tool it's it, it's difficult. What my suggestion would be is get out to walkerexhaust.com. Walker Exhaust, obviously, are the manufacturers of Walker Exhaust, but one of the neat things is they offer some great troubleshooting tips on catalytic converters, a lot more than what I could explain to you here in a simple question. But what I'm giving you is the opportunity to look at some of their videos. They talk about looking at catalytic converter temperature, looking at engine temperature, because a thermostat can be the cause of the fault of a P0420, oxygen sensors and how often oxygen sensors switch how they uh, how they move in relation to each other can definitely cause a p0420 fault code to set and in general the catalytic converter being worn out now one of the things you say in your email is that when you looked at the readings they were not the same and you figured that would mean a dead cat actually that's not correct what we're looking for is the front oxygen sensor to have a good high low switch meaning that it goes up in voltage and down in voltage at a regular rate, at a constant rate, as it's supposed to. And the rear O2, if the catalytic converter is storing oxygen, and that's what a catalytic converter does, one of the things it does is it'll store oxygen so that it can later be used to convert the the emissions coming in into harmless pollutants going out. You'll see that rear O2 at a fixed high rate, And that way you know that the CAD is working. And it has to be done under certain conditions, more than I can explain here. And what I'm talking about is if you want to Google oxygen storage capacity test for a catalytic converter, that's one of the things we look at. And then the other is an oxygen sensor switch rate or ratio test of a catalytic converter. But all of this requires a good scan tool or the ability to look at both sensors on two separate multimeters. But however you do it, your question was good enough to make the grade in my book. Get out to walkerexhaust.com. They've got an excellent troubleshooting section there. And as soon as you contact us, send me an email, ron at cardoctorshow.com. And we will get a Car Doctor t-shirt out to you. We'd like to talk to you on the phone a little bit. Uh, we will make some phone contact available for you. And we can kind of go from there. And glad to count you as part of the Car Doctor family. If you want a Car Doctor t-shirt, get out to the Ron and Annie and the Car Doctor Facebook page. Like the page. I can't stress that enough. So many people liked the post. That's not what it's about. Like the page. Like the page. Ask a question. And if we pick yours, we'll answer it right up here on air and send a Car Doctor t-shirt out to you of your very own. More coming up as we go on into the next hour coming around the bend. But for right now, I'm running and the Car Doctor. Let me pull over and take the pause. I'll be back right after this. <laughs> 